A couple t quick takeaways, because a, a lot of you are probably introverts because of the nature of your studying, is that introverts are great people that are excellent leaders. In fact, I'm doing research where I'm interviewing CEOs of companies over 5,000, so big companies, and about 25% of CEOs are introverts, about 30% of C-suite executives are introverts. And it's a Darwinian struggle to get to the top, which sure shows the incredible value introverts have. Now, if you're a CEO, and again, this is true of a professor that many of you will be someday, is that Claude Mangeau runs CN, 25, 24,000 people, big train company here in Montreal. Claude is a McGill MBA, an introvert. When he leaves his floor in the Legociataire, he puts on his game face and acts like an extrovert. Why, why is that, do you think? Why does he have to act like an extrovert? What's that? Well, he's CEO. So in fact, he had a training where he had a coach that uh, taught him the five-click method of becoming more extroverted. So he gave him a clicker like a, uh, someone has in a bar, like a, um, what they call the bouncer, OK? So the bouncer has a thing that clicks how many people come in or at a football game, things like that. And so he said, Claude, five times a day, you've got to act like an extrovert. So at the end of the day, you look at the clicker and say, did I make it or not? So when he gets in the elevator, so an introvert might get in an elevator and just look at your feet. You don't say hi to anyone, which is all right if you're a starting person, but if you're the CEO and, what's your name? Julius. Julius. So if I get in and I'm the CEO and Julius is there, is someone a couple levels down, I ignore him. What is Julius saying to himself? He, not worth you're not worth, oh, gee. So I mean, <laughs> I'll give you a hug afterwards. So that, no, you're saying is that, yeah, no, in a certain degree, you know, I'm not worthy, he hates me, I'm going to get my resume and send it to CP, our competitor in Calgary. <laughs> so you overreact. So what you should do as CEO, I get in the morning, I go, morning, Julius. And I look in the face, use your name, and I smile, and I say something like, boy, that's cold out there, which is hard to argue with. It's something where I'm not going, <laughs> I'm not trying to stir up controversy and say, hey, the Leafs are terrible. Well, Montreal, you could say that. And they are terrible, so it's a statement of actual empirical fact. <laughs> but it's something where you're, what you're just connecting with him as a human being, and you're there, and Julius feels better. Because the great one recognized me, he knows my name, I feel better, I'm going to keep working here, I feel more motivated. That's somewhat, but not entirely overstating it, isn't it? That's the nature of it. So the principal of McGill schmoozes me when she sees me. But Heather Monroe Bloom, the old principal, I saw her. She hasn't been principal about two years. I saw her walking down Green Avenue the other day. So we stopped and chatted about my trip to Columbia and Chile. We're done. She walks away about 20 feet, stops, and turns back and says, Carl, you do a great job with students. She's stroking me two years after she's no longer my leader. She still strokes me because she's an excellent leader. What she's doing is, and I go away going, I do useful things. Because someone three or four levels up says I do useful things. Now, I should hopefully be old enough to not worry about what other people think and so on, but it's still nice that someone like that is recognizing you. Does that make sense? So it's saying as, as an introvert, he's got to act like an extrovert on occasion to be a more effective leader. Now, if you don't want to be a leader, that's fine. Don't act like that. Now, what I've argued that as an extrovert, when I leave my office, I don't have a floor, I have to put on my game face and act like an introvert to be a better leader. So how do you think I should act like an introvert to be a better leader? What do you think? What's that? Better, better listener? Anything else comes to mind? <laughs> oh, you're being mutually supportive, so that's good. So you didn't add a lot of detail, but it's, you know, it reinforced it. So thinking, yeah. So the idea is that introverts are better at listening. They tend to think before they speak, and so uh, that's very helpful as well. It's also that I don't need to be the center of attention. So in fact, as an older person, I should put the focus on younger people that work with me, because it's the right thing to do as you get more senior. So it's something where, um, you know, it's when you have children, at about age 10, you no longer have a name as a parent. You become the father or mother of Eric, my son. So you go to school and you don't have a name, you're Eric's father. And you go, wait a minute, 
I'm more important than a 10 year old. They have more education, to make a lot more money, I'm more recognized. <laughs> like, you know, and you go, I'm more important, but you go, and if you play sport with a small child, you should let them win. The fact is that as a grown man or woman, you can beat a 12 year old, we're not impressed. The fact is that you have to beat her shows you're sad. So part of an extrovert wants to be the center of attention. So maturity is, as a leader, you focus attention elsewhere. So as an extrovert, I need to act like an introvert to be a more effective leader. So both sides have got to reflect on the other.